All right, it's time to hold more mustard and Spy Fox hold the mustard. It looks like today we're in Oh yeah, that's right, we're going to Florida! Florida Swamplands. <laughs> this is great. I already love it. Big big fan of Florida. It it's a flat state, it's a hot state. But it's a pretty fun state. Like the five most magical places on earth are in Florida. Which if you don't know, in order, we've got Obvi well, obviously, Disney World is market market markets itself as the most magical place on Earth. Uh, we've also got Gatorland. We also have Jungle Golf, the Magic Castle Wizard Tourist Gift Shop. Uh, there's also Machine Gun America. Can't forget about Machine Gun America. That that's that's a gotta pull to do. They got Legoland. And oh, well, they used to have Blackbeard's Mini Golf, but. They actually closed that. But it's okay. We still have jungle jungle golf. Oh, I mean, Universal, it's, yeah, it's not super magical, but it's pretty good. Actually, we've reached a point where I like Universal more than uh, Disney World. It's definitely not just because of my personal, uh, <laughs> personal dislike of what Disney's been doing for the last few years. But actually, no, Universal has really been upping their game with regards to their attractions. If they just dialed back on the screen-based attractions, I think it would be a lot better. But unfortunately, a lot of the Universal rides are like, Oh, you, you're you in like a movie... Oh, oh I forgot about this power-up. Dang, it's like fiends from space. Now, a lot of the Universal attractions are like, you're in, like, a moving bench of some kind, and you're just in front of a screen, and it's like, okay, that's that's kind of cool, but at the same time, if I just want to watch a screen, I can do that outside of the Urfine Park. I, I like the old school rides. I like the dark rides. I'll need some fuel. No, you don't, Spy Fox. Oh, okay, actually, maybe, maybe we do. <laughs> it's okay, we can refuel. <laughs> It's Florida. Gas prices are cheaper here. That is, that's one thing I do miss about my Texas trip. Gas was a lot cheaper in Texas than it is in Michigan. Like, in, Mich in Michigan, gas is like 350 on average, I'd say. And then in Texas, I was paying like 250 which is still high, I would say. A lot higher than it was when I was a kid, but nowadays, oh man, 250 for gas would be real nice. Oh yeah, Sonic, you you experienced the Zelda timeline for the first time. Oh, uh, you know what? The Zelda timeline's not even people make it out to be more complicated than it is. If you can get past the three different timeline split at Ocarina, it's not too hard to understand actually. It's also not super important. Because, like, you can play each Zelda game as, like, a standalone game. May maybe not Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know. I haven't played Tears of the Kingdom. But I've I think it's a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. So, you can probably play Tears of the Kingdom without playing Breath of the Wild. But you'll probably get more out of it if you have. You'll also get more out of Oracle of Seasons and Ages if you play both of them. Ooh, yeah, uh, but you're also on the West Coast, so West Coast gas prices are a lot higher than they are in, even in the Midwest. That's, that's gross. Back in my day, gas was barely above a dollar a gallon. Anyways, I sure hope people like it watching Spy Fox shoot the same spaceships again, because that's what we're doing. Oh, blind shot. Okay, you can play Seasons and Ages without ever playing Link's Awakening, and vice versa. Oracle of Seasons and Ages actually, like, literally connect with each other. Link's Awakening doesn't. Apart from having a lot of the same sprites, but that's because the Oracle games borrowed from them. Oh, Mega Man! Huh? Oh my gosh, you're you're playing on playing Zelda one, two, and the Mega Man. Oh. 
I'm, I'm just saying, the Mega Man games, I love them. I love the Mega Man games. They are brutal. Like, those are the types of games you expect to have many game overs, and expect to have to play stages through again and again until you can get it right. If you do that, I think you'll like the games a lot. Although, I guess I should be more precise. When I say I love the Mega Man games, I really, really, really like the first part of Mega Man game, like the first half of Mega Man, but then after you beat the main stages and reach the fortresses, that's when I don't like it. With a couple of exceptions. Okay, for real. In Florida, they just keep on coming. Actually, this whole plot, this whole game's plot sounds like one of those Florida Man stories. Florida Man creates Spaceship Armada to wipe out ketchup so he can improve his mustard sales. Like, that, that seems like a headline that I would believe. I wouldn't believe the headline if it happened in Michigan, but in Florida, oh yeah. Yeah, people be weird in Florida. But you know what? I also think there's something a little beautiful about it. <laughs> That's literally what it amounts to. Just like, did you know this is the same link? I love how even Zelda 2, which is like a direct sequel to the first Zelda game, is very standalone. <laughs> I'll also I will also defend Zelda 2. It's super different, it's way too hard, but it's actually legit fun. If you go in expecting a completely different style of game, it's actually it's it's enjoyable. Until you get to the Great Palace. Then you then you wanna just kill everyone. Is there a fan remake of Adventure of Link? I have never heard of that. <laughs> Whoops. It's a good thing I almost destroyed my spy mess so I could get another spy mess. Spy Fox, that is not how that should be. <laughs> Sorry, Quack, can't hear you. <laughs> Going through a tunnel. You're in the Florida Everglades, Spire Fox. There are no tunnels. <laughs> You're breaking up. <laughs> Making the game less painful to play wouldn't be hard, to be fair. Again, I like Zelda 2, but it is... There are some ridiculous... It, it makes no sense to me why there's a life system in Zelda 2. It sucked me into that. I just want to point out, like, I shot the guy, and it literally just pulled me into that. Well, it's a good thing I got the extra life. <laughs> if you were just more careful, you wouldn't have needed it, Spy Fox. Well, you went through all the trouble to make it, so I just thought I'd do it. <laughs> How to, how to make Zelda 2 a little less painful. One, make sure that the, each dungeon comes with a map. The fact that Zelda 2 dungeons don't have maps is actually kind of devastating, because the, the dungeons tend to be very confusing. Number two, make it so enemies don't steal your experience points when you hit them. Number three, make it so that when you level something up, it doesn't go down if you die. Maybe that was Japanese only. <laughs> Number three, get rid of the Faka enemies. You can try to share a link. I'm not sure if Twitch will allow that, but you can try. I don't, I don't want just anyone to be able to share links, but... Oh! 
Oh, okay. Interesting. It's also interesting how many changes that were made in Zelda 2 from the English version and the Japanese version. I'll need some fuel. There's a great video of like I think it's like region break where they go over like all the differences. It's actually a really cool video. Definitely recommend it. I just realized they're not stealing tomatoes. <laughs> I guess it's cuz there are no tomatoes in Florida. There are none. Oh, there's a Link's... I guess I'm not surprised there's a Link's Awakening randomizer. Here's the thing, though. Some of the Zelda games are really, really good in randomizer form, and others are not. I feel like the Game Boy Color slash Game Boy titles aren't the best for randomizing. Like, I think Ocarina works amazingly well. Link to the Past works amazingly well. Majora works pretty doggone well, too. Haven't played, like, the Wind Waker or Twilight Princess ones, but I feel like those would not be nearly as good just based on the nature of those games, but... Uh, who do... I don't know. Again, I've never seen them, nor have I ever played them. What's up, X-Dude? Welcome to the stream. We're just flying our private jet. <laughs> our spy jet. I do not like how long these levels are, though. <laughs> it's just like, okay, we destroyed the last one. <laughs> we got a couple more that just spawned in. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, they're not taking any tomatoes. I did, yeah. I didn't look directly into it or anything. I didn't have the, like, glasses or anything, but it de I definitely noticed. I'm like, it's pretty bright outside. Oh, now it's dark for some reason. And it was surreal, because the sun still looked normal, but, like, everything was just darker. That's fair. Yeah, you, you do. You gotta know your limitations. You can still kind of play the co-op seeds, though. Just not the multi-worlds. I seem to recall us doing... We definitely did a Majora co-op seed. Or two. I remember, because we literally had to search every spot, and the last thing we needed was in a spot I swear I turned off. Maybe don't fire the spy laser willy-nilly spy box. We don't want to hit innocent civilians. We don't? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> spy box, the collateral damage you've caused while trying to hold the mustard is going to run us into the several hundreds of mil millions of dollars. <laughs> don't worry, we'll just turn this into a best-selling children's game and make up the money that way. <laughs> Blast them off screen. If I can. Oh man, it is it is hot in my room right now. Maybe I should have turned on the A air conditioning. Fuel. Spyfox is always complaining he needs fuel. Yeah, dude, I think I got this. Actually, actually, realistically, if Spyfox didn't constantly say that, I probably would forget and run out of gas. Like, legit, that's probably something that would happen. Spyfox is starting to sound like Archer. Which Archer? Will? Rebecca? Louise? Bernadetta? Leone? Turn it. Why are there so many spaceships of? Oh, oh wait. I, I suppose. Why are so many spaceships in Florida? Well, that is home of the Kennedy Space Center and NASA, so uh, that's probably why. Please be the last one. Thank you. Level complete.
We at least gotta make it out of Florida. <laughs> oh, is that what Archer is? It's a parody of James Bond? Oh, I've heard the name of that show before. I don't know anything about it, though. Spy Fox, you don't have to make the jet noises to make the jet go. Oh. Oh, look, I found another spy mess line out. Line out? I put that there for you, Spy Fox, because I had a feeling you would need it. <laughs> well, how generous. I'll make sure to take advantage of this gift and use it to its fullest. Please don't intentionally suicide yourself, Spy Fox. That would not be cool. The world I'm in right now, Mobius, is Florida. Oh, yeah. Damn, this ship can just turn on a dime. What are the real jet engine like airplanes doing? There we go. But man, anytime I shoot... Surely King Conglomerate needs to be watching this, being like, Hey, actually, maybe this isn't working. Maybe throwing the same weak spaceships at this guy over and over again isn't actually going to eventually destroy him. Maybe we should go back to the drawing board. But he doesn't. It's like, it's like the fake company Elon Musk made, so we could sell not a flamethrower. That was one of my funniest Joe Rogan moments, I'd say, it was when, he, when Elon Musk was just explaining his not, not a flamethrower idea. So yeah, like, there are laws against selling flamethrowers in a lot of places, so I just called the thing not a flamethrower and they let me sell it. Just like that, that can't be true. Oh my gosh. Spy Fox was too busy watching Joe Rogan's podcast to actually <laughs> drive his private spy jet. Whoops! <laughs> okay, seriously, like, is this just the gimmick of the world that there's no tomatoes here? If so, why are his forces here? Why is King Conglomerate setting up all of his spaceships here in Florida, launching them? to the ground when there are no tomatoes to steal. Which is literally the whole point of his plot. Every, I swear, every time I shoot a spaceship down, another one spawns. Evasive maneuvers. Like, the fact that we have not encountered, like, any ships that actually try to shoot you back is truly astonishing to me. There we go. <laughs> Good as new, Quack. What did you do to this spy mess? Oh boy, we broke a hundred thousand points. <sighs> Florida Swamplands. Maybe it's like, go to the floor, go to Florida and steal all the tomatoes, and they land in the Everglades. It's like you idiots. No tomatoes here. <laughs> Whoops. Go homing missiles. I love not even having to look where I'm firing. Off we go. Man, ran out of homing missiles. That's okay. This is still pretty good. I hope I don't regret grabbing that too early. I just have to be on my A game when it comes to blasting the ships. Just have to do it really, really quickly. Starting to see why there are no junior helpers for this game, because it's pretty easy. Come on, man! 
blast them. Don't let them land at Disney World. Don't let them go to Rapunzel Parking. Even though this is a completely different part of Florida. Quack, when we're done with this mission, can we go to Machine Gun America? Don't you have, like, actual guns in your spy arsenal? Not a machine gun! <laughs> they won't let us take real guns in these kids' game adventures. I guess that makes sense. Oh, come on. Stop spawning! Oh my gosh, every time! Yeah, we destroyed them. Well, let's just spawn another one. <laughs> you know, Quack, they're not actually doing anything here. They're not attacking anybody, and they're not stealing tomatoes, so shouldn't we just let them leave? No, destroy them all, or the level's not complete, Spy Fox. <laughs> well, that seems a little strange. Oh, hey, there's a big ship here. Judging by my radar. I love the drastic change in the uh, appearance of the sky. Alright. So this seems like it's a level where we find the weak point and blast it. It's my favorite kind of level. Again, it, it, it sucked me into it. Did you seriously waste another spy mess? I plead the fifth. That only works if you're in court, Spy Fox. Whoops. I was trying to blast it, and apparently it's like, haha, no. Apparently this fan has its own gravity field. There we go! Level complete! How wonderful. Is that the end of Florida? Nope. No, it's not. So now we're inside the giant ship. And we have to guess what's part of the background and what's not. I love that. Oh no, it's the tiny ships. The tiny ships are actually by far the most dangerous. Because they're smaller targets, but they deal just as much damage. And they generally come in large numbers. Okay, maybe they don't do exactly as much damage, but... Maybe you don't have a way of dealing with them. What?! Why did it blow me up?! <laughs> that didn't even make sense. Problem with the small ships. If you let a cluster of them get to you, you're screwed. There we go. Let's not be in the range of its explosion this time. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Florida Swamplands. King Conglomerate is loading a fleet of space shuttles with tomatoes. But why would King Conglomerate be ferrying tomatoes into space? That's for you to find out, Spy Fox. We're not doing any spying. We're literally just blowing stuff up. Oh, this is a new world, technically. Florida Space Center. Well, that seems like a good spot to end the stream. We've cleared the Florida Swamplands, but now we're going to Kennedy Space Center next time. So that'll happen on Wednesday. So tune in for that 8 p.m. EST. We'll play Backyard Baseball Game 10. Follow it up with going to Kennedy Space Center. That should be uh, interesting. Thanks for joining in, everybody. It was great chatting with you all. I wish you all a fantastic rest of your night, and God bless.